On today's content we have a Blade Vortex Elementalist as the main dish and an update to the channel's content as the dessert. So let's dive in with the PoE stuff. Blade Vortex, I love this spell, it's the skill that keeps on giving, despite the adjustments that it goes through every couple leagues, this skill still lives on. It's a pretty flexible skill because there's countless ways to build a Blade Vortex character but if I'm being dead honest, conversion to elemental damage is probably the best way to play it. Because of that I decided to play an Elementalist and quad deep on Heralds to greatly increase the effectiveness of the skill. On today's content I won't be going in depth with the build as I'm just gonna talk about what I did in general and the things that you can do to play a similar character. You see, despite Blade Vortex's effectiveness, it has multiple negatives working against it. The first one is duration, which comes in hand with the cast speed. The base duration of Blade Vortex is 6 seconds and with a slow cast speed you're gonna be wasting that uptime casting it non-stop. Because of that you need to invest into skill effect duration but you also need plenty of cast speed. From my own experience, and if I'm being totally honest, Blade Vortex does not feel good if you don't have at least 9 seconds of uptime for it, while at the same time if you're not casting at least 3.5 blades per second, it also becomes a chore to play. Investing to fix these hurdles can lead to the next negative, which is mana cost. Now, my setup with Blade Vortex is pretty mana expensive, I'm using a 7 link. On the chest I have Arcane Surge intrinsically, and I'm also using 4 Intelligence Support Gems, because of that the mana cost is relatively high. In order to circumvent the annoyance of running out of mana, I invest in mana cost reductions and plenty of mana region. At the same time, I decided to use inspiration support not only for the mana cost but because it provides offensive bonuses which are hard to pass up. With the mana region I get on my gear, I sit at 170 mana region per second. This is more than enough. All this setup makes it so that the skill is cheap to play and not annoying to deal with. Another inconvenience is that Blade Vortex is a dexterity spell, it uses 155 dexterity at level 20. The tree route I take ventures to the side of the tree with the least dexterity on it, so my gear and my passive choices need to maximize usefulness while also having room for the dexterity I don't have naturally. However, there's another minor negative and that's gonna vary between people and that is how much money are you packing and you're willing to spend in order to start a build like this. If you want to invest into critical hits, you're gonna have to spend a lot more to get the most out of your character. The route I take focuses on keeping the skill cheap while not venturing towards any crit modifiers in the tree. Because of that, I decided to use elemental overload. I mainly went this route because I was not very liquid and I really wanted to play with blade vortex, so I opted for the this version of the build. In order to get the most bang out of my cheapo setup, I decided to use a Shaper stat stick and to be honest, any flavor is okay as long as it's a one-handed weapon. Axes, daggers, claws, maces, swords, etc, you name it. Aim for two physical damage as extra elemental damage mods and you'll be okay. Just be sure to get nice rolls on them to maximize your damage output. The last obstacle to overcome are defenses. Again, we're on the side of a tree where defenses are scarce. I decided to invest into some block chains and that ended up cheapening resists. To further support the block chains, I use a room misconcoction and to further reduce the damage taking, I like using fortify on my movement skill. I also experimented around with damage sources and for that I decided to invest into frenzies on my rings and disip all of this louder on the amulet, making it so that I pack 3 frenzies with me at all times. I also reuse the Hrim Sorrow Globs with elemental weakness on hit for even more penetration and invested in an OK shield with spell damage and crafted global physical damage. I also crafted a Stygian Bias with Jack fossils for another source of physical damage. For flasks I'm using a taste of hate and an at series promise to maximize the DPS output. To top it off I'm also using Ball Righteous Fire and Ball Blade Vortex effectively making the deletion of enemies a priority. And to be honest I am proud of the little synergetic mess I ended up with. I'm gonna link the POV on screen right now and in the description should you want to play this build and that way you have a reference point if you wanna check out what I was doing with the character. Now let us talk about the dessert and that is October. After I'm done posting this video, I'm probably gonna be checking out Cube World and that means that I'm probably gonna be streaming it over at Twitch. So here's my link if you wanna come and hang out in chat and be sure to drop a follow or say hi.
Anyways, the game's release is going to be an interesting mess and I'm gonna be talking about it throughout the week. Hopefully it's not as bad so that I can produce some content for it and if it's terrible then we're gonna have to repeat a new butthole. Besides that, Shadowkeep releases on Tuesday and I won't be immediately jumping into it because I wanna make sure that their migration to Steam is not a messy one. Once I can guarantee that nothing is going badly, I'm gonna be checking that out. Expect content on that too because, to be honest, we need to diversify this channel a little bit. Seriously, Destiny is something I play occasionally and I feel like I can produce some content for it on the channel. From there on out, I'm also interested in seeing what's gonna be happening to the Division 2 this month. Here's to hoping the devs give us a good reason to log in daily. So hopefully their patch is bonkers. Lastly, no, I'm not a ditching part of Exile, but it won't be the highlight for the channel as it was for September. I'm kinda conflicted at the initial Blight Thoughts video because it's doing pretty good, as I personally would love if every single video were to hit that kind of engagement. But nevertheless, we're gonna be coming back to it throughout October as I still have build ideas to put into fruition. What I ended up working on was a Slayer Fist only bow character and that's on hold until this initial crazy week of October is over. Moreover, a minion build afterwards better be this channel's clover. I'm not sorry. So yeah, that's it for today. Hopefully you give Blade Vortex a go because Blade Vortex is one of the greatest things this game has to offer and it must be protected at all costs from further nerf adjustments. As always, make sure you subscribe and be sure to tune in next time when we play another Blade-based skill that power crept its way back into the meta. Take care and goodbye.